Hi, I'm Dr. Y. You're welcome to today's edition of Dr. Y series. Today, I am in the bush, like I am really in the bush. And I'm doing this because I am taking a special topic which is very uh, common to us in this environment, which is malaria. So I'll be talking about malaria today right from the bush. As you can see, we have the bush all around. And stay tuned, I'll be right back. Like I said earlier on, we're talking about malaria today. And I would like to let you know that malaria actually came from the word bad air. Malaria means bad air. People initially were having malaria, thought it was because the air was bad, the air was polluted. But it took a while before they realized that there was something that was responsible for the malaria they were having. And so as a result of that, they called it malaria. Now, malaria is a disease caused by a parasite that is transmitted by mosquito. Simply placed, mosquitoes transmit the disease called malaria. And malaria is common in tropical and subtropical rainforest regions like we have in our environment here. And the reason why it's common in this area is because we have a lot of waters that are actually being collected and it encourages, the temperature encourages the breeding of, of mosquitoes which cause the malaria. Now, malaria is primarily caused by the female Anopheles mosquito. And when we mean female Anopheles mosquito, we have different types of uh, mosquitoes. We have the Culex, we have the Anopheles, and we have some other variants of mosquitoes. But the female Anopheles mosquito is the primary cause of malaria. Now, the truth of the matter is, the female Anopheles mosquito does not mean to cause malaria. What happens is the female just comes to you, bites you, and while sucking your blood, it introduces the parasite mistakenly. Now, I use the word mistakenly because it does not intend giving you malaria, but during the process of the blood sucking, it drops the parasite into the bloodstream, and this parasite actually goes straight to the liver and eventually to the red blood cells. Now, when it gets into the red blood cells, it causes destruction of the red blood cells, and that is exactly what causes the other symptoms you'll be seeing as we discuss the topic malaria. So people ask questions like, since mosquito transmits malaria while sucking blood, can't they also transmit HIV? No, mosquitoes don't transmit HIV. So nobody should ask Dr. Y that, can mosquitoes cause HIV? No, mosquitoes don't cause HIV. Symptoms of malaria usually start between eight to 25 days after you must have been bitten by the mosquito. Now, these symptoms could include things like loss of appetite, generalized body pain. Some people may have headache. Some people may actually feel feverish and, sh and shiver. Some people may be vomiting. Some may have abdominal pain. Then, because of the destruction in the red blood cell, the person, uh, you, you may have what we call anemia, that shortness of the blood, or reduced uh, PCV. You may also have dark colored urine, like the urine become darker than normal. Person may also be feeling dizzy, which could also be as a result of shortness of the blood. And children may usually present with convulsion. So how do we treat malaria? We treat malaria primarily by using anti-malaria medications. There are several anti-malaria medications in circulation. The first anti-malaria that was being used was quinine before we later on started using chloroquine. And now we now have several anti-malarias. But now the anti-malaria medication used depends on the severity or the type of malaria or the causative organism like we have falciparum, we have vivax, we have ovale, we have uh, malaria, we have some other um, um, species of the plasmodium parasite. So the treatment of the anti of malaria depends on the cause and the severity of the malaria. But usually in our environment here, the commonest cause of malaria is plasmodium falciparum. And there are medications we use in this environment for treatment of this. But don't forget, it depends on the severity. There are sometimes you have to go on injections, sometimes you may have to go on intravenous drugs. So if you have malaria, it is very important you come to the hospital so that you can be checked and treated properly. Now, the combination of anti-malarias we use now include things like artemisinin with probably amodiaquine, 
or atemisinin with lumefantrin or atemisinin with mefloquine or some other combination therapies which are the things we use now in treatment of malaria we don't encourage you treating malaria with just one particular um anti-malaria when i mean anti-malaria like you using atemisinin alone or atemisinin derivatives alone in treatment of malaria is wrong so it's better you use what we call the act the atemisinin combination therapy in treatment of malaria now a lot of people would go and buy anti-malarias before even coming to the hospital yes i understand that we have the free access here but i would always advise you to seek medical advice before you treat malaria especially if you are pregnant if you are pregnant i would not advise you to just go to any counter or go to any pharmacy and buy anti-malaria and take it it is very important you see your doctor before you treat malaria if you are pregnant likewise if you have children too that have malaria it is important you see the doctor before you treat malaria because your child's weight will determine the quantity of or will determine the dosing of the anti-malaria your child is going to take so some people may just assume i'm just going to take this quantity of anti-malaria it is very wrong you might give the child more problems than you than the malaria the child had so it's very important if you have a child that has malaria please try to go to the hospital and let it's not going to cost you so much to just do a simple malaria test in this environment it costs less than a dollar to do um, a malaria tests in this environment and i'm very sure it's going to help you a lot if you confirm whether or not you have malaria or whether or not your child has malaria before you initiate treatment so that you can get the best out of it and prevent resistance of malaria in future generations Sorry we have to take a break now. I would like to let you know that it is possible to stay without having malaria, like to live without having malaria, even if you have mosquitoes all around you. So the next part we'll be talking on how you can prevent malaria, even if you are breeding mosquitoes, when I mean breeding mosquitoes, like even if you have mos mosquitoes all around you. So stay tuned and watch out for the second part. If you want to live long, stay strong.